Greetings to all of you. It is a privilege to welcome you to this Gathering Day Spring Chapel service. We have gathered in this place having traveled from near and far and by way of streaming live video. So wherever you are right now, know that you are here and we feel your presence. A special welcome to Bishop Karen Olivito and your wife, Deaconess Robin Rednauer. Robin, where are you? Here you are. Would you stand, please, and also be greeted? <laughs> Bishop, we have been looking forward to this day since the moment of your election. This summer, Kathy Kelsey make sure I receive the news of your election <laughs> and at the, in, within the same call also inform me that you, our new bishop, were already scheduled to preach in the Isle of Chapel. <laughs> <laughs> and we only tell the truth in this place. <clears throat> and now this blessed day has arrived. Bishop, we are grateful for your commitment to the work of ILIF and for your presence on our board of trustees. We are grateful for your influence on our students, our beloved students, and for your witness toward an inclusive church. Amen. You have been, your, your, your formal bio is in the order of service, so we're gonna let people read that. But now we're going to talk about what, that, what those degrees mean. You have been a teacher of seminarians who seek to root seeds of justice deep in the center of their beings. So we welcome your scholarship. You have pastored on the rugged streets of San Francisco's Tenderloin District. So we welcome your heart. You have spoken unpopular, though liberating truth in public spaces. We welcome your courage. You lead with joy all of God's people of the Mountain Sky area of the United Methodist Church, and we welcome your wisdom. A few months ago, I was invited to post on Facebook, on a Facebook page, a letter of celebration for, of you. So I posted it, and a few days later, I looked back at the post, and one of my sentences about you seemed to ring true for someone else, and they highlighted these, these of my words. So these words are speaking about you, Bishop, and I publicly wrote, wrote them. I wrote, you embody what I hope all of our ILIF students will find within themselves. Years ago, um, actually, I've been watching closely your work for your whole career. And most recently, your presence with us in this area. And it just reminds me of something from my own experience. Uh, years ago, when I was exploring my own call to ministry, I visited a person who was to be my mentor who had been asking me to think about ministry. And so I finally came to it myself and could go authentically to him and ask him to explore it with me. So I declared myself in this man's living room <laughs> and he invited me to take a seat and he listened to me very intentionally for a long time and then when, he, when I ended what I was there to say he said those, what for me were, were intriguing words that I didn't fully yet understand. But I knew they were important. He said to me, <clears throat> he said to me, there, you will have moments when you are acting faithfully, doing it very well, 
But despite it all, there will be those times when people will hate you. But you are called to love, and that will make all the difference. Bishop, our beloved Bishop, I can imagine no greater example of one who has loved, fully lived this quality of love more than you. Your actions and your way of faithfully living in the world models the truth of these words. So on this blessed day, we welcome you. We invite you to bring a word of that love that will make all the difference to us this day. On behalf of the Isle of Community, a genuine and warm welcome to you. Yeah. Bishop Karen Palahida. Stay standing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My name is Angie Haysacker. I am here. You are here. Let us proclaim together why we are here. People of God, why are you here today? We have been longing to come together and we're eager to be face to face, breathing the same air, singing the same song. People of God, what are you praying for, longing for today? Some of us have been praying for the Church of Jesus Christ, praying for Bishop Olivito, praying for a way forward to emerge. Some of us have been longing and praying for justice in our fractured world. People of God, what do you expect today? We expect to renew our trust in God's power, our trust that God makes a way out of no way. We expect to follow God's way. God is faithful. There will be a way. Let us sing praise with joy and with unshakable trust. Jesus is our assurance.
that is within me, bless the Lord's holy, holy name. I don't know about y'all, but I'm totally feeling the Holy Spirit up in here, up and down, left to right, and all around. <laughs> Whew, okay, center. <laughs> Please join me. Oh, let me introduce myself. My name is Mina now. I'm a student here at ILIF. Um, please join me in the scripture reading for today, Psalm 116, 1 to 4, 15 to 19, and it, um, it has been rendered for today. I love you, Lord. You answered my prayers. Deadly acts threatened from all sides. But when I was really hurting, I prayed, I said, save my life. You are deeply concerned when one of your loyal people is threatened. We worship you, Lord, just as our mothers loyal people did. And you rescue. And you rescued, Bishop Oliveto, your people from death. We will keep our promises to you. Whenever we gather for worship. Amen. Amen. Please feel free to join in on this song. The words are in the bulletin and we will repeat it a few times and sink into a prayer space with this chant, Don't Be Afraid. Don't be afraid My love is stronger My love is stronger than your fear don't be afraid my love is stronger and i have promised promised to be always near don't be afraid my love is stronger my love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid. My love is stronger and I have promised, promised to be always.
My name is Bridie Harris. I'm a student at ILIF, and I'm also an unapologetically black queer Christian, and I was tasked today to write a poem for this very sacred chapel. I am five years old, and I am holding my broken heart inside of my black body, and I am looking up at a stained glass white Jesus hollow in the middle, brick on the outside facing out, and it is my father's church, and it is a war zone, and stained glass Jesus is the center, and I am the other, and we are there together, misinterpreted, queer brown things, trying to speak through bad artistic renditions of ourselves, but no one can understand our symbols, because they don't ask, and we don't tell. And so white Jesus stays white, and I stay fiction, and we pretend they're together between the pages of tear-stained Old and New Testament, clenched in my fingers like an atlas without a key to read it, and I don't know which direction I am headed in. And Christ is my witness, but up there in the stained glass, he can't speak through his brick and glass and mortar, and they don't ask us, and we don't tell, and we remain there together, misinterpreted. I am 10 years old, and every day I am growing to be more like Jesus, and by which I mean every day like stained glass Jesus, and which I mean every day I grow more silent, more glass on the outside, hollow in the middle, brick facing out, mortar where my open mouth used to be. And I want to tell the church that I have known the love of God, and she was beautiful, and she was holy, and I used to sound beautiful because she taught me how to sing, and I could show them, she could show them, we could show them. But they don't ask, and we don't tell. And so God stays white man, straight man, up in the sky man, white kids at his feet, white lambs at his feet man, and I stay quiet and still, and we stay there together in the church, misinterpreted. I am 15 years old, but I am a hundred nightmares, and none of them are holy, and all of them are violent, and there is something inside of me that they say even God can't love, and there is a sick love inside of me that they can't pray away, and I ask my pastor and my teachers to talk to God for me, but they just open the Bible and find the places that contain the knives, and they use those knives to carve the best parts of me away until I am just glass on the outside, hollow in the middle, brick facing out, and God's love for me is stuck between the words and symbols inside the sacred book of misinterpretations, and we are stuck there together, and all we want to do is love each other, but they don't ask us how, and we don't tell them. I am 20 years old and I am trying to run away toward God and away from church, but I don't know what she looks like, because there are no pictures in the tear-stained book I still carry from my childhood. So I am looking for, my, for any signs that remind me of the feeling I used to get when God taught me how to sing, sacred feelings, safe feelings, home feelings, but the only home I know is survival, and sometimes that looks like street corners, and even if I were too young, and even if I weren't too grown to go back home, I would still be too gay to enter when I get there, and I know that if I could only tell them that there is a love so much bigger, I have seen a love so much bigger, and she taught me how to sing, but they don't ask me, and I don't tell them. I know that there is a God so much bigger that walks beside me, but they don't ask how best to love us, and we don't tell them. And so my lips, rendered shut from years of shame, I force a whisper, your silence will not protect you. Shh, shh, don't ask, hush. Hush now, church, don't tell. Your silence will not protect you. Shh. Holy hush now, church, hold still. Look behind us, but not too far behind us. Look too far back and you'll see us hidden figures behind organs and guitars and drums. Your silence will not protect you. Shh, shh, don't ask. Hush, hush now, church, don't tell. Your silence. Holy hush now, church, hold still. Look behind us, but not too far behind us. Look too far back and you'll see us hidden figures behind pulpits and in Sunday school rooms. Your silence will not protect you. Shh, shh. Don't ask. Hush. Hush now, church. Don't tell. Your silence will not protect me. Shh. Shh. Holy hush now, church. Hold still. Look behind us, but not too far behind us. Look too far back and you'll see us hidden figures painting open mouths on stained glass Jesus. Shh. Your silence will not protect you. Shh. Don't tell. Don't ask. Hush. Hush now, church. Don't tell. Your silence will not protect me. Shh. Shh. Holy hush now, church. Hold still. 
Look behind us, but not too far behind us. Look too far back and you'll see us hidden figures in choir lofts and pews. Your silence will not protect you. You said you want to be more like Jesus. But without the ability for miracles, you traded walking on water for walking on our backs. Hold still. Look behind you, but not too far behind you. Look too far back and you'll see us hidden figures who doubtless are made, already made it across rough, rough waters. We have seen the depths of the sea, but it did not compare to the battles we have already won in our own homes and churches. And we were not afraid. Hold still, but not too still. For we are already moving with or without you. When God put a rainbow in the sky and anointed our heads with flames, we did not tell her that they were beautiful, but that the timing was bad. Hold still and listen, but not too still. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old, for the Holy Spirit is moving with or without you. And she cannot be slowed down. And she cannot be slowed down with misinterpretations, false symbols, and old robes. Look back. Church, hold still. We're we are stepping out of stained glass silences and back into the song. Hold back. Look back, church. Hold still. Amen. Amen. Feel free to remain on your feet if you like and uh, <laughs> join in this song which we are singing today as the church. You will pick up the refrain as we go. Break me open, wash me clean.
all concerns into a deeper dream. Break me open, wash me clean. Break my leaky lifeboat, leave me swimming in the stream. Break me open, wash me clean. Break me open, wash me clean. Break me open, break me open, wash me clean. Break me open, wash me clean. Wash me clean, wash me clean. Wash me clean. Wash me clean. Keep that going. Wash me clean. 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 My name is Deacon Daniel Claywitter, and I would invite you to stay standing. For the gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. John chapter 20 verses 24 through 29. Hear these words. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas with them. Although the doors were shut. I say, although the doors were shut. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Mm -hmm. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Community, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It is such a delight. And so hard and so fast in love with so many. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm being. Still here. I'll just do this. We're all informed here, right? We are now. (laughs) 
see if that's one two it's a little loud now turn it down one two oh i just actually i needed that i needed that <laughs> But as I was saying, Robin, I couldn't believe how hard and so fast we had fallen in love with this area and with you. And that's what the tears are today. Yes. Because we are in a waiting time. Not knowing if by Friday whether or not I will still be. Love never fails. Amen. Amen. The love that's been forged can never be broken. Yes. And so I trust in the God who says, come follow me. Yes. Come follow me and I will give you rest. Yes. Yes. Come follow me and I will take you to places you could never imagine. Me. Colorado, Utah, tiny little bit of Idaho, <laughs> and I live seminary. Yeah. So I have so Robin and I have felt your prayers, your support, your love. So let us pray together. Gracious God, how mysterious is your call? It comes to us in the quiet of night. It comes to us when it's least convenient. It comes to us when we feel in the valley of the dry bones. And still, you call to us. Your still small voice whispers to us. You are mine. And there's something in the world that only you can do for me. So may each of us listen, respond, and then breathing deeply fall back into those waiting arms of God as we surrender ourselves None of us, none of us can imagine. Amen. Now I want to share with you one of the things that's been most difficult. Well, no, that's not right. In my transition as bishop, difficult isn't the word. Difficult is the word. What's the word I'm looking for? It's not difficult. It's a... Challenging note. It's not the word. Give me another. Unexpected. That could work. That could work. That could work. <laughs> Unexpected. Well, that's not either. Try it again. Give me another one. Give me another one. Disappointing. What? Disappointing. Oh, that's close. What else? <laughs> Frustrating. Oh, that gets closer. Ooh. Okay. Trouble. Frustrating. Frustrating. Irritating. Okay. In my transition, it has been the need. Bye. Car. <laughs> now, Robin and I shared a car for six years. We only had one car and we never used it except to get to the gym, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, but, but we did, we bought the, we bought the Colorado car, the Subaru. <laughs> that I love taking public transportation. I love it. And I really love BART. You know, that I, mean, I lived in San Francisco, Bay Area, rapid transit. Loved it. 
That's the main public transportation that links through the, the Bay Area. I love Park because it has so much done. Now, I to, and I don't know if you know this app, Pray As You Go. Anybody know this? Oh, if you don't, you've got to look it up. It's from the UK. And it uses world music, prayers, and traditions, and great way to start my day. But then I uh, do a crossword puzzle, levels, <laughs> pay my bills, and even nap. I loved it. I loved it. One time during my private meditation and personal enrichment time, I found being encroached upon by someone playing music. Now this was more than someone's iPod earbuds blasting. This was music on speakers. Hmm. On a public transportation vehicle. <laughs> now I was reading on Barton. Every time I said it, concentrate, I heard da 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 da. Then I'd settle in again. Da 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 da. What was that song? My ears. And then I made it out. That's what it's all about. <laughs> well, it was about the <laughs> You know, you put your right hand in, you take your right hand out. Which is a really great way to segue into this morning's scripture. <laughs> you got students here, I could tell. They're A week past the resurrection, Jesus we're still having trouble coming to grips with the fact that Jesus was not born in the tomb. Mm -hmm. Thomas, in particular, was quite unbelieving about this resurrection thing. He said, Unless I see nail holes in his hand, put my finger in those nail hands, stick my hand in his side. Later, the disciples were in the room. This is how Thomas was with them. Jesus came to the locked door, stood among them, and said, Peace be to you. Then he focused his attention on Thomas. <laughs> Take your finger. Come on. Come on. Bring it here. My God, my God, my Jesus said, so you believe seen with your own eyes, with your own eyes. The more I meditated on Thomas, particularly through this time of the Judicial Council deliberation, the more my appreciation of Thomas has grown. Hmm. First, Thomas wasn't willing to let someone else name his reality for him. Yeah. Yeah. How many of us have had our reality denied or put down? How many of us have had our reality suppressed or lied about? Condemned or disbelieved. Too many of us have, have been force fed someone else's truth about the world as well as someone else's truth about us. About who we are and what we've experienced. Yes. This is especially true. Say it. This is true in the Homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. Now, mind you, let's be real, let's keep it real. This was adopted without any discussion of what constitutes the practice of one's sexuality. Can somebody help me tell me what that means? <laughs> Oh, 
off camera. <laughs> or tell me, tell me, point to me what Christian teaching this is based on. Because you know, yeah, Jesus spoke so much about it. has resulted in an increasingly silencing of queer voices in the United Methodist Church without their, without our experience being included in the debates around human sexuality we have no voice to an issue which is talked about instead of bringing our experiences into the, to, the, to the table to inform the conversation mm. we are told is, we are told what our relationship with Jesus is, we haven't told what's valid, and we're told which ones really are not to be taken seriously. So I want to celebrate. I want to celebrate mm -hmm. you, the Daddy Thomases, the Mitts, <laughs> who put their foot down and say, unless it is my experience, I cannot accept it as my truth. I no longer accept sexist, racist, homophobic, classist, ableist, ageist, and Yes. I no longer accept that you consider me unclean, unworthy, unlovable. I am not sinful. I am not lazy. I am not dirty. I am not a good for nothing. I am not untrustworthy. I am not sick. Hmm. Have you been fed about you? I won't believe it. I won't believe it. Eckhart Tolle in his book, A New Earth, your truth your actions will be in alignment with it. The truth is inseparable from who you are. Yes, you are truth. If you look for it elsewhere, you will be deceived. Some Christians, Christian mystics call it the Christ within. Buddhists call it your Buddha nature. For Hindus, it's Atman, the dwelling of God. Embrace the doubting Thomas within you and claim and name your experience of truth. And then take the next step with Thomas. I believe Thomas represents a very basic element of human nature, this desire for intimacy with God and others. We wish to know and be known. We want to touch and be touched. But the past lies. We've been told about ourselves. The past wounds we still carry with us have twisted this very basic human desire and it entangles us and we wind up as the song goes, looking for love hmm. in all the wrong places. Mm -hmm. spiritually, spiritually, we have to wonder, how can we be known by God when we're not sure God's with Our seeking God is as much about wanting to know God as it is wanting God to know about us. We want to touch God in order to know that God is real. And in our touching, we are assured that God touches us. In that exchange of touch, we experience power and possess the reality of the resurrection to become known in our lives. So many people today are on a spiritual quest. They're hungry for, for meaning and Hunger. Let me say that again because I know what you're studying. 
dogmas and doctrines fail to fill this hunger. Instead, people are looking for an experience of God yes. that is transformative, that creates an awareness of the mystery of life, that brings in hope, harmony, and joy. They want to touch and be touched by God. Amen. Amen. You know the people are talking about. Sometimes we are more than anything for God to show God's face to reach out our reach for our hand to find a hand reaching back to us in this exchange we're transformed hope returns possibilities reveal themselves yes resurrection happens even in us in the very depths of our soul we long for this just as Thomas did. After Jesus' death, the disciples felt a huge void in their lives. The one they loved, the one that brought God close to them, was gone, and they grieved this loss. They, every single one of them, needed some proof, a personal experience of Jesus in order to feel God's presence in their life. A rolled stone, an empty tomb, folded grave clothes, even Mary's testimony of encountering the risen Christ weren't enough. They needed to experience it themselves. We who stand 2,000 years away from that empty tomb need it as well. We want to we want to touch the risen Christ. To those of us who are the children of Thomas, God has not left us to wallow in our doubts and yearnings. For God has ensured that those of us who want to know and intimately feel this power of resurrection can experience it for ourselves. I believe in the risen Christ. Yes. I believe in all that Jesus It continues to happen. It is a mystery. And it is a miracle that I have witnessed over and over and over again. Last summer, I'd love to hike. One of these days, we'll have enough time to get out into the mountains to do, to do some around here. But, but last summer, we, we hiked through some charred remains of a Sierra fire that had occurred a year earlier. When we walked through it, it was brimming with life again. Now I tell you, yeah, that's a resurrection going on. Mm -hmm. And I've seen resurrection happen all over the place. Every time I see someone deal with their addictions, there's a resurrection going on. Every time I see someone face their deepest wounds and start the healing process, there's a resurrection going on. Every time I see someone come out as LGBTQI or as genderqueer, there is a resurrection going on. Every time I, I hear someone sing their song, there's a resurrection going on. Every time I hear someone speak aloud the truth of their lies, there is a resurrection going on. Every time. engaged in reconciliation. There's a, there's a resurrection going on. Every time I see someone commit themselves to another human being, there's a resurrection going on. Every time I see a new commitment to the welfare of children, there is a resurrection going on. Every time I see someone working for the rights and dignities of someone else, there's a resurrection Going on. Every time I, I see a community come together with vision and energy for change, there is a resurrection going on. Yes, 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 yes. I have seen the resurrected Christ in the faces of those around me. People who have been entombed by others have been released through the love of God. People who, for what Every reason and to themselves had discovered, have discovered through this life, through the healing power of God, have come to the resurrection. Entire communities have 
have been entombed through oppressive efforts of others have been freed by God's justice. Yes. Whatever has sought to deaden people, make them less alive, and place them in lifeless tombs, this can hold no match for God's power to restore, to renew, to resurrect. Yes. Yes. Oh, God. Amen. For centuries, when, when, the, when the bread Air, the words corpus meum would be chanted. Hmm. These words meant, This is my body. Yes. When this sacred phrase reverberated through the, the massive crooks and crannies of medieval cathedrals, it didn't sound so much like hoc est corpus meum. It sounded like hocus pocus. <laughs> Composer Larry Priest found a way to convey the musical form what hocus corpus meum or hocus pocus requires. Hmm. He calls it the hokey pokey. <laughs> and it begins with the line inspired by Thomas's doubt. Put your right hand in. You put your right hand out. You put your right hand in and you shake it off. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. This life, this journey to wholeness, this spiritual quest which each of us requires us to not just a hand. or a toe, but our whole selves mm -hmm. in. Not one is to be held back. Every day, we make up to choices that must be made. Some choices are deadly and will suck the life out of us. Some of us, some will put us teetering on an edge. Still others are life Put your whole self in. Yes. Put your whole self in to this spiritual journey. Put your whole self in to your recovery. Put your whole self in to your relationship. Put your whole self in to your community. Put your whole self in to going green. Put your whole self in to peacemaking. When we put our whole self in, speaking aloud the truth of our experience, the world can never be the same. So, so while I was on the bar, the hokey pokey playing loudly from a boombox, I turned to see where the music was coming from. Instead of a child, there was a, a physically developmentally challenged, middle-aged woman sitting in a wheelchair. Hmm. In spite of themselves, the passengers who, like me, had once been really bothered by this music, all of a sudden started to stand up. <laughs> As they, all of us, you put your whole self in, you put your whole self out, you put your whole self in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey, and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated. My name is Matthew David Morris, and I'm a student here. It is my honor and privilege to sing this song I wrote for today. In the image of love, in the image of the one who delivered me.
And look, we are on our feet again. That is, a, <laughs> that is a great place to be as we sing this closing song. Draw the circle wide. Draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone. Standing side by side, side by side. Draw the circle wide. Draw the circle. Draw the circle wide. Draw the circle. Draw the circle wide. No one stands alone. We'll stand by side by side. Draw the circle.
place yes. upside down and God front, particularly the bishop, a chance to get out so she can greet you. And she's... <laughs> Go for it. So long as... You can lead anywhere. I'm following with a remembrance of our baptism. You are invited as you leave to remember your baptism and the ministry to which you are called by virtue of your baptism. Now you can ignore it, that's all right. Or you can get a little wet, or you can take a stone as you go and remember this day and your calling. First, while we're doing all that, would you greet one another with the peace of God? 